DC Strategies is a firm based in Washington, D.C. I'm, an, I'm a recovering architect, I tell people. But our firm specializes in systems integration of software products for the built environment, and particularly Autodesk products. And we do, because we're in D.C., a fair amount of work for the federal government. And the federal government, as the biggest building owner in the country, is particularly interested in BIM as a database. I mean, most of the BIM users uh, really appreciate its versatility as a design tool. But the, for the owners, the design is only part of the picture. They really want to see how BIM can be leveraged as a database and, and how we can import different types of data and different types of file styles and support different types of programs downstream for them. And you will hear the term being used by some government agencies of not building information model, but uh, building uh, information management. So um, the idea is that owners need to access the building information that resides in multiple places and in multiple formats. And they want to develop an enterprise building information manager portal or management strategy that can manage and navigate all of these information streams so that they can query and retrieve and access the data about their buildings when they need it. And they can incorporate new things uh, in real time and information as it comes down. And that's kind of the vision, and that's, that's sort of the, the goal or the aspiration that many building owners um, describe when they talk about them. But the problem is our business model. You know, our business model, which is rooted in medieval times with the guilds and the very strict barriers and separations between trades and between participants, um, doesn't lend itself very well to standardizing format and uh, exchanging information. So in the typical project you, or government project, you may have four entities, the owner, the architect, the GC, and the CM. And I, I want to thank Chuck Thompson of the Rice Building Institute for this slide. Um, but there are a lot of entities that are supporting these groups that participate actively in the design and construction process. And particularly in government agencies, there's usually a whole department or team behind the owner that has um, different functional reviews. The architect has a very large staff of consultants, uh, probably for the average large new government project, 30 or more. The general contractor, of course, has a lot of direct subcontractors. And the construction manager has their own staff. Well, that, of course, doesn't even include the huge number of suppliers and um, building product manufacturers that sit behind the subs or all of the users and tenants and other people that interface with the building and, and may have something to say about how it's designed and how it's functioned. And it also doesn't consider people who have an active interest in the design and construction information, which is permitting, regulating, uh, and, and operating, maintaining, and, and emergency responders. So you can see that with this enormous cohort of individuals that are participating in the generation of data for our building projects, that it's very, very hard to develop standards or, or um, data exchange. So we want consistent data. We want to be able to rely on consistent data, but we don't really produce it that way. The architect is doing a lot of original creative thinking, and they're creating some data. But it's not just design data. It also includes unstructured data, such as the specs, the cost estimates, the bid, the lead report, maybe energy analysis, that don't really have a home in a BIM model right now. The contractor's job is to analyze the data and develop scheduling and management plans, and maybe they're using Navisworks. And they even do a little bit of amplification of the design in terms of rework and conflict uh, detection. And then they produce their data in a variety of different formats, and of course, not necessarily even understanding what the owner's capabilities are and what, and what their platforms are so that they can retrieve that data. So in addition to not having any real coherent standards for how we produce data, we don't really regulate data that way either. And, and one of the salient metrics about any building, sort of the platform for which we evaluate our buildings is space. How big is the space? 
And even though we have been building structures for over 5,000 years, we don't have a single standard or agree on a single methodology for measuring space. We have multiple standards and we have multiple ways of calculating um, spaces. And for anybody that has entered a lease negotiation for commercial real estate can probably find this problem uh, fairly daunting. But that's not to say that there's no hope or chance of improving the situation, and, and Autodesk is here to help, and um, they want to help you be able to meet the existing standards and processes that are mandated by federal agencies and to help uh, move the ball down the field a little bit in terms of developing the building information management system. And so DC Strategies, in conjunction with Autodesk, is developing a bunch of Revit templates for federal agencies. And those templates are sort of grouped into three discrete categories. One is equivalence, and that's the equivalence to the CAD formats that are required by the federal agencies now. The drawing sheets, the schedules, uh, the master sheets and details that uh, the, the agencies may require. The, the second type of template is what we'll call an extension, where it might be a macro or there might be a template guide plate. Uh, we have a COBE application that I'll show you in a second. And the third type is an enhancement or a plug-in that actually populates the Revit, uh, the Revit model with some specific agency-specific objects. So here's an example of a standard BIM template for NAFAC showing their CAD standards migrated into a Revit format so that you guys don't have to recreate this every time. Um, we have an Autodesk Kobe toolkit which takes the Kobe files and, and formats um, Revit schedules and objects in the same format that Bill East at Searle has required for the Kobe process and exports that to an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, and then there's this SEPS BIM tool, which has been uh, developed in conjunction with VA and the military health system, which takes Revit models of medical facilities and automatically populates it with the standard equipment, medical equipment that's required by VA and military health for their hospitals. So for any of you that have done uh, VA projects or hospital projects, and you know how tedious it is to take the SEPS template and compare it manually, room by room, and make sure that all of your equipment is actually in that space. This is a way for um, you to do this automatically. So on the fly, you take your SEPS database, and this is being data tested right now, and in the sample here, we have, I think, 2,000 SEPS objects. Creates Revit families for those objects on the fly. You select rooms in the model either graphically by clicking on them or through a pull-down menu um, in the SEPS tool base. And um, then, and you'll see this in just a second, the equipment automatically populates the room. Right now, the equipment is not realistic. It's conceptual. But all of the parameters that exist in the SEPS database about those individual pieces of equipment um, actually exist in the property schedule in the Revit model. So now we're, we're watching it uh, insert the equipment into the space. There you go. There, there are the conceptual um, objects. In addition to placing it, and here you can see the Revit families in the schedule of all the different types of equipment that are in this space, you can validate whether the rooms have the accurate equipment or not. So that if the SEPS template is updated or if you accidentally move an object, you can uh, be sure at the end of the day that through um, a color coding system that the correct objects are in the correct locations. All of these templates are going to be available to Autodesk subscribers sometime in the first quarter of next year. Happy to include anybody in the SEPS beta test if they're interested, particularly interested. And uh, this is just validating SEPS compliance. You get a list of equipment that's missing, list of equipment that um, needs to be included in the different rooms, and you 
you can color code that as well so that you know the green is go and the red is no go. Anyway, with that, um, I want to say that the owner is the key. The owner is really the one in the driver's seat, and the owner is the one that's going to be able to articulate their needs and, and, and drive innovation. And the owner has to start thinking of themselves, and I think they are starting to think of themselves not as a client and not as a customer, but actually as the CEO of the project. And it's a really big sea change for the culture of our industry, and uh, I think it's a very exciting time.